we're going to continue our discussion of um, reactions of benzene by talking about um, some of the most prominent reactions of benzene. And these are the Friedel-Crafts reactions. So Friedel and Crafts were two scientists, um, hence maybe the um, unexpected spelling, but these are the Friedel-Crafts reactions. These are um, two types of reactions. the alkylation and acylation reaction. In the alkylation reaction, you add an alkyl group to benzene. And then very similar reaction, but has um, uh, kind of an interesting mechanistic twist in the acylation reaction, you add an acyl group. To uh, benzene, so the acyl group, this is a um, carbonyl CO double bond attached to an R group, whereas an alkyl group is just sort of an R group with no uh, pi bonds directly attached at the first position of the R group. Okay, so <clears throat> for example, like a CH3 or an ethyl group, this would, these would be examples of alkyl groups, ethyl, propyl, butyl, that sort of thing. Um, okay, so these are two super important reactions. And what they do is they take advantage of AlCl3 reacting with uh, chlorine atoms to make super electrophiles. And so what we see is just a general set of reactions where for alkylation reactions, we have some R group that's attached to chlorine. An R group that's, I'm gonna flip those around. I'm gonna flip those around just so we keep the picture from the chlorination reaction because it's very similar to the chlorination reaction where we add aluminum trichloride as a catalyst. Now. What we'll see when we look at the mechanism of these things is that the chlorine atom sticks to the catalyst and gets activated um, or gets soaked up by the, uh, um, the catalyst and the R group actually gets activated. And the R group is what actually forms a bond with the um, aromatic benzene ring, okay? So this R group could be a number of things. It could be like um, a methyl group, which we'll look at. So it could be a CH3 and we just add aluminum trichloride to this. And so it could be things that look like methyl, like primary, it could even be hindered things like um, a T-butyl group. We're just going to see a different mechanism for this reaction to occur. So here's a T-butyl group. We again use the same catalyst and we add the T-butyl group onto our ring. Okay. So the T-butyl group is, is added. These are two uh, nice examples. And then this um, is contrary to the acylation reaction. And this is the last I'll say of the acylation reaction, but I just wanna have, I just want you to be able to see the parallelism here. So in the acylation reaction, we have our R group attached to a carbonyl, which is a CO double bond, and that's directly attached to the chlorine. But it's that thing that's directly attached to the chlorine it gets added to our aromatic ring. So here it's not the R group, rather it's the carbonyl that is attached to the R group. So more on this later, say two lectures or so. Um, but the acylation reaction is quite important. Okay, so with that in mind, let's go through the mechanism for the Friedel-Crafts alkylation reaction. So in the Friedel-Crafts alkylation, we're actually gonna see, um, at least for some examples, something very similar to the chlorination reaction, where if we have a, many examples, but if we have a um, methyl chloride or some sort of alkyl halide where the alkyl group is forms a primary chloroalkane, and we can use other halogens too, just I like I like to pick chlorine because it's a nice um, 
it has nice parallelism to the chlorination reaction. Um, as long as we use aluminum trichloride, this reaction seems to work where we're going to add a methyl group and an R group through, if it's these two, a primary chloroalkane or a methyl uh, chloroalkane, we're going to go through an SN2-like mechanism. An SN2-like mechanism, which tells me we're not going to have a carbocation. Okay, so what does this look like? Let's do the actual mechanism now. And so this is, again, I just want to emphasize, this is with CH3 or primary alkyl chlorides. Okay. In this reaction, our first step is going to be making our super electrophile. This is an electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction just like we saw with the chlorination reaction. So we're going to start by making our super electrophile and it's going to look very similar. If you recall, before what we did was we took Cl2 and reacted it with AlCl3 and we took advantage of the fact that aluminum um, trichloride had an open site um, where it could accept electrons to get closer to its octet, actually achieve its octet. It just is in this precarious position where we have a positive charge on chlorine, a negative charge on aluminum but aluminum has its octet, so it's sort of happy. That activated this chlorine atom that I'm boxing to be our electrophile. What I want to do in every case for the alkylation reaction is I want to do a swap. I want to substitute the chlorine for an R group, the chlorine at the end of the atom. So it's this chloroalkane that's going to adduct with our aluminum trichloride to form a good electrophilic position, this time at carbon, the carbon that's attached to the chlorine that's attached to the aluminum. Let's actually draw that out. So if we have some sort of, I'm going to pick on CH3. I like to draw this so I can see that the carbon is directly attached to the chlorine atom, but the lone pair of electrons in the chlorine atom are going to adduct with the Lewis acidic aluminum trichloride. Lewis acidic because it wants to accept a lone pair of electrons. Okay, now after we form this adduct, we're going to have some charges to consider, negative charge in the aluminum plus charge in the chlorine atom. Now from here, it turns out that this is our super electrophile. It's not electrophilic at the chlorine atom in the middle, it's electrophilic at the carbon atom at the outside. So what this means is that the pi bond of our benzene is going to be able to add to that carbon atom. And it's especially thrilled to add to that carbon atom because we have a low amount of steric hindrance. Now, when it adds to that carbon atom, it's going to neutralize the positive charge in the chlorine atom um, that's sort of bridging between these two elements, carbon and aluminum. It's going to neutralize that positive charge, but it's going to leave behind an overall negative charge complex, which is aluminum tetrachloride, aluminum with four chlorine atoms. Additionally, in sort of more importantly, when we adduct the chlorine atom to our molecule, we're down a pi bond. So we have a positive charge at one of the carbon atoms. What I wanna do is add a hydrogen to this so that I can see which hydrogen is lost to reestablish aromaticity. I don't add the hydrogen onto the carbon that has a positive charge. I add it onto the one that accepted the new element. And oh my gosh, I screwed that up. It's not Cl's from last time. Now it's CH3, that's the whole purpose of this thing. So I wrote Cl there, but we're adding to CH3. So the CH3 is what comes along for the ride, not the CL. Sorry about that. Okay, at this point, we have our cationic intermediate, which can lose a hydrogen atom to reestablish aromaticity and form a product where we've replaced the hydrogen atom with a CH3, hence the substitution reaction. And it's electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction because our aromatic molecule is reacting with an electrophile. So this is another example of EAS, electrophilic aromatic substitution.
Okay, now what I could do is I could um, go ahead and write this if we need to plus H plus, but this just goes to very favorably HCl plus aluminum trichloride. And that's important because the aluminum trichloride is our catalyst. So we have once again, a catalytic process where our catalyst is aluminum trichloride. The aluminum trichloride is feeling the presence of the chlorine atom adducts to it, makes a super electrophile, which can engage the aromatic ring, just like another electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction. We're gonna see a lot of these to make some sort of cationic intermediate, which loses a hydrogen onto the, um, from the atom that accepted the R group. And we have our aromatic molecule um, back again. Okay. So the thing is we can do the same reaction. Um, we can do the same reaction with um, another primary alkyl halide. So let's look at this. If instead of methyl, if we have um, Pro, or let, let's do ethyl chloride. Instead of methyl, we have ethyl chloride and we react these two things with aluminum trichloride. We can go through the same mechanism to give rise to an ethylated product plus HCl as a byproduct and the aluminum trichloride is a catalyst for the reaction. So the mechanism here is very similarly. The first step is forming the super electrophile We'll impair on the chlorine atom, adducts with the aluminum center to give us this species. Now the positive charge on the chlorine atom shouldn't distract you. It's the carbon that's attached to it, directly attached to it, not the one at the end of the chain, but directly attached to it that's our electrophile. So the pi bond on the benzene ring can attack that carbon atom. So again, it's not the carbon at the end, it's the carbon attached to the chlorine with the positive charge. So we're going to add to that carbon, pushing the carbon chlorine electrons onto the chlorine atom. That's going to form our cation intermediate. And you could really put the ethyl at any carbon position. I just choose this one. And I'm going to draw the hydrogen on that carbon. So I know that's the hydrogen that needs to be lost to complete the substitution reaction and reestablish aromaticity. Now along, for, along the way, you could have Al, Cl3, Cl, um, the fourth Cl hanging on for dear life. It'll fall off to make Al, Cl3 plus chlorine minus, chlorine minus could act with H plus, whatever. Al, Cl3 is regenerated. It's a product and a starting material for the reaction. It's a catalyst. Okay. But now back to the action, which is the carbon containing molecule. We're going to lose a hydrogen on the carbon to complete the substitution reaction and reestablish aromaticity. Now what I wanna point out after we've done this mechanism is it looks the same as the previous mechanism is that with methyl and primary chloroalkanes, Benzene can directly attack the aluminum. And it's an aluminum minus complex. Well, it's neutral. I'm gonna write the aluminum complex. And what I mean by that is RCL, AL, CL, CL, CL minus plus. So we can directly attack this R group. Oh, that's not a highlighter. Um, when the R group is methyl or primary. I've said that a few times now in this lecture, but it's just, it's a cumbersome point to, to deal with. I mean, it's steric hindrance, okay? If we have low sterics, at the R group where we're directly attached to the chlorine atom, we can just directly attack. If we're more substitutive with tertiary chloroalkanes, if we're more substituted and we have tertiary chloroalkanes, a carbocation is going to be formed. And this is a lot like a SN1 reaction. It's 
So it's similar to an SN1 reaction. So let's go ahead and look at an example of that. I could draw something general here where I could say RCl reacts with aluminum trichloride to form this species. Now I just drew this up above. So you're like, what's the difference? Well, if we have this complex and R is tertiary, like a T-butyl group, what we could do is just let the electrons walk away to give a carbocation R plus plus AlCl4 minus and that sort of thing. Anyway, with this, if this happens, then this is our super electrophile. So we have a new super electrophile. This is a carbocation. Okay, now what that means is that R plus can just react directly with our aromatic ring by way of an electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction to give this species, which is the same as what we saw before, lose H plus to give our substituted aromatic ring. So it's kind of the nature of the R group as to what we're um, what mechanism we're going to go through. Something that looks like an SN2 reaction where we have direct attack, backside inversion of configuration, that sort of thing. Don't worry about that stuff. Um, or are we gonna go through a carbocation intermediate? And so it just depends on the substitution. Methyl primary will stick with an SN2-like mechanism. Tertiary will go through this carbocation mechanism. Let's go through an example where we do involve the carbocation. Let's take benzene. We're going to react it with T-butyl chloride. Now, if you notice, the carbon with the chlorine atom is tertiary. How do I know that? Well, I'm going to look at the chlorine. I'm not going to count that, but then I'm going to go from the chlorine to the carbon. The carbon atom that I'm speaking about is this one. I'm going to count how many things, uh, things, how many things are attached to that that aren't chlorine. Remember, chlorine is what defines it as a chloroalkane. So I'm going to count the number of things, not including the chlorine. I get three or tertiary. So tertiary. If we react that with aluminum trichloride in the presence of benzene, we're going to complete an electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction where HCl is a byproduct. Now, the mechanism for this will be different from the methyl and the ethyl mechanism in that when we form our super electrophile, which is the first step, so I've got my super electrophile, we're going to go through a carbocation intermediate. tertiary carbocation. Okay, what does that look like? Well, the chlorine atom with its lone pair of electrons are going to engage the aluminum trichloride center because the aluminum trichloride is a Lewis acid. So it's willing to accept, um, it's a potent Lewis acid. So it's willing to accept almost any lone pair of electrons. Remember, um, the thing that donates the lone pair is the Lewis base, okay? So after that occurs, we're going to get to this aluminum complex Alumate, aluminate, aluminate com complex. Never mind. Don't worry about the nomenclature. It's aluminum with a negative charge. Yeah. Later courses. Okay. So <clears throat> we have this complex. Excuse me. I'm going to make a new page here. We have this complex. And we're going to let that spontaneously decompose into a carbocation by taking the electrons between the carbon and the chlorine and pushing them onto the chlorine atom. Why would I do that in this case? Well, in this case, now I form a tertiary carbocation, highly substituted, highly stable, plus aluminum tetrachloride, which is going to fall apart to make aluminum trichloride with some Cl minus around. Okay, there we go, taken care of. So we have a tertiary carbocation. This is highly substituted and highly stable. but it's this positively charged carbon atom that's our electrophile for the electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction. So the aluminate complex kind of looked at itself with its negative charge in aluminum, positive charge in a chlorine atom. It's like, carbon, are you good if we just take the electrons and the carbon's like, in this case, I am good because I can form a, a substituted carbocation, which is stable, I'll be just fine. Whereas the methyl and the primary were like, don't let go of me. Like, I'm not gonna make it on my own. Okay, so anyway, the 
pi bonds on the benzene atom are going to recognize the opportunity to neutralize this carbocation intermediate. Even though it's a stable species, it's still carbon with a positive charge. Not great. Let's go ahead and deal with it. So the benzene's like, I can contribute. It's going to add two electrons from the pi bond. That's going to make a bond with the central carbon of the t-butyl cation to give us this. We now have a positive charge on our aromatic ring. I'm gonna draw the hydrogen on the carbon that accepted the t-butyl group because that's the hydrogen. It's lost from our, ca our cationic intermediate to give rise to um, a neutral product. H plus gets lost, but H plus can be dealt with by other means. So H plus is lost and we form a t-butylated or just saying t-butyl substituted benzene. Okay, so this is our product. It looks just like, I mean, they're both Friedel Crafts alkylations. We add an alkyl group, not an acyl group, not the carbon that directly attaches doesn't have pi bonds. Okay, so this is, this is an alkylation, but the mechanism is different because of the um, opportunity for the super electrophile to break down into something that's a little bit better. Not great, benzene can still react with it. So it's important to be able to diagnose whether or not you have a primary or a um, methyl primary or tertiary carbons that'll tell you what mechanism we're going through. Now you might be like, you're leaving one out here. What about the secondary carbons? And the answer is between which mechanism, SN2-like or carbocation SN1-like mechanism. If you have a secondary chloroalkane, the answer is complicated. And we'll save that one for next lecture. So until then, I'll see you next time.